Is this even real wood? Ugh! I am so excited to be included in this ugly duckling challenge alongside so many talented YouTubers where we try to flip an ugly piece of furniture into a beautiful swan. Full playlist link will be in the description. I found my ugly duckling on Marketplace for, get this, $20. The lady I purchased it from was in a hurry to get it moved out. She had recently acquired this vacant property and was looking to clean it up. Apparently, the previous tenants left this cute little MCM dresser along with a lot of other stuff and junk. I'm not sure how long this dresser had been sitting outside, but here where I live, it's monsoon season. And in the previous weeks, we had several flash floods. Ooh, that leg's been sitting in water. I shot this video just a few days prior while I was out shopping. A flash flood just rolled in on us. What will we do without our husbands? I got called to work, so my husband was like, sure, I'll go pick up this piece of furniture for you. What a great guy. When I was finally able to take a look at it once it got home, right off the bat, it's missing half of its hardware. Not a big deal but it's also painted and I'm not sure how many layers or what kind of paint. The drawers were in surprisingly really good shape. They're solid wood, they have the usual stains and scratches on them. I'm not sure what's underneath this paint. Hopefully it's wood, we'll find out, but it does have these big gouges all over the drawers. And you can see up here, there's a couple different colors of paint. I started off by removing this strange looking hardware which after doing some research, I found out happened to be original. I went ahead and tried this Jasco premium paint stripper for the very first time. It was very, very highly recommended to me by a guy I met at the hardware store. I usually really hate stripping furniture because I just can never seem to find a stripper that does what it claims and it ends up turning into a very messy process. I put it on very generously because it was 100 degrees outside and I covered it with some plastic wrap to help keep it moist. If your paint stripper dries up on you, it becomes ineffective. Just trying to get it on there and put more plastic wrap on as soon as possible. I was surprised. Okay, I just want to show you. I just finished applying this Josco stripper onto my entire dresser, the drawers and all, and look how much it's already peeling up the paint. This could be my holy grail, guys. Sit your strip, eat your heart out. After about 45 minutes, I decided to go ahead and take it off because it was so hot outside, I did not want it to start drying. And the paint, the paint just crumbled off, guys. I was so impressed by this stripper. Until I got to one of the drawers. It seemed like it was going to peel off really easily, and then I was kind of shocked. <laughs> I was so mad because I thought the drawers were made out of that hard, plastic, fake wood-looking stuff that they sometimes used to make furniture out of. All it needed was another coat of stripper, and we were good to go. I cleaned everything off with mineral spirits, which... I don't really care for but it's way better than wasting a whole stack of sandpapers and hours and hours of work clean everything off with the mineral spirits and a stripping pad and it came off like butter 
After that was done, I gave everything a really good scrub down with TSP and then came back and rinsed everything off with clean water. I then left it outside overnight so it could dry and I was so relieved to just be over and done with these steps. Yes, the next morning I awoke to a nice, freshly stripped, clean dresser thanks to this Jasco stripper. It did a really, really great job. There wasn't a whole lot to sand, which is always a plus. I started off with 120 grit sandpaper to use only on the areas that I knew were solid wood, like the inside of the dresser frame and also the sides of the drawers. They're usually kind of rough and I like to smooth them out. And anywhere that I needed to sand, like some drips of glue, um, stains from the inside of the drawers, as well as scratches, and then painted parts that shouldn't have been painted. For the tops of the dresser, as well as the top of the dresser drawers, which happened to be veneer, I lightly sanded those with 220 grit sandpaper and then glued up any kind of loose veneer that I found. There was only a few and veneer is so thin that instead of clamping it, a piece of masking tape is sufficient. For the tops of the drawers, the gouges, I use this uh, quick wood epoxy because it dries very, very hard and it dries fast. And I really didn't feel like using uh, Bondo. Bondo is kind of messy, so this is kind of a quick substitute. All you do is cut off a small piece, you mix it up like Play-Doh, and it reacts once it mixes and you put in place. It does dry really quick, so you have to work fast. Turning over the stressor, I wanna show you the legs. I wanna show you that they've been sitting in water and they are cracked and they are molded. Even though they're clean, they are not structurally sound. So I decided to just remove the legs they sacrificed themselves to save the rest of this poor dresser. Look at those nails. Look how rusty they are. <laughs> Thank God for these legs, though, because these legs are what kept the rest of the dresser intact. The legs are what took the brunt of the flooding. So let's give it some new legs. Let's give it some sexy legs. Before I could start anything, I just needed to take a few measurements and I always try to keep them together like on an index card. That way I can just stick it in my pocket. In my Pinterest folder, I had this picture saved probably for at least five, six years from Dorsey Designs. They made these really cool curved legs from scratch and I've always just seen them and thought, wow, I wanna try that someday. So what better opportunity than to try it now? I went to the hardware store and was hoping to get a nice piece of wood, but Ike's the cost of lumber right now. I was able to get a piece of Douglas fir and I was kind of picky going through the pile looking for something that had a really cool grain pattern in it and I found this piece. Since I didn't want to have to go back to the hardware store and buy another piece of lumber, I knew I didn't want to make any mistakes with my cutting. So I made a template by simply cutting a piece of cardboard to the width and the length that I needed my wood to be. And then for those curves, I marked the center point along with the line that was in the concrete and held a piece of string onto a pencil and just kind of trial and error made marks until I found an arc that was sufficient that I liked. It didn't have to go all the way around on the top part, but it did have to go all the way around on the bottom part, and I'll show you here. If you look at my arc, I have, it's flat on the top, and that's because I need a place to attach it to the dresser. I cut that shape out and then folded it in half. I went ahead and got another piece of cardboard and I traced half of the arc onto the cardboard. And then 
I measured out half the length of the dresser from the middle point of that arc outward. So I know how far out to make the other part of the leg. I really didn't want it to extend past the dresser, but you can if you like. There's really no rules to this. I made a mark where the end of the dresser would be so I didn't go over that point. And then drew a line straight down so I had kind of a border to draw the rest of my part out. I just kind of played around with different angles with my ruler to try to figure out what kind of shape I wanted the bottom part of that leg to be. And it's just pencil and cardboard so you can play around and just draw and erase and doodle and until you come out with something that you like. I found an angle that I liked so I figured out how tall I wanted my legs to be and made a stopping point and then just kind of lightly sketched out the shape of my leg. Once I drew my, the rest of the shape out, I drew a straight line across right in the middle so I had a flat point for both parts to attach to. I'll make adjustments to my arc as well so that my pieces match up. As you can see here, I drew a line across that arc and just chopped it off. After cutting out the other part of the template, I just assembled them onto my board, kind of like a sewing pattern if you sew, trying to avoid those knots anywhere on the edges because that's a really hard place to have to cut through and trying to kind of overlap it on some of that cool grain so I would possibly get a cool pattern on my legs. I just trimmed everything off with my jigsaw and had my son help hold the other edge. Easy peasy. I like to assemble everything um, in, you know, <laughs> in between my projects just to make sure things are fitting properly together before I move on. Um, so if I have to make an adjustment or remake a piece, I can do so right away. I have to tell you guys, this little hand router is quickly becoming one of my favorite hand tools. I just used a round over bit and I was able to round over all of these edges and make these hand cut pieces look like finished pieces with just a little bit of sanding in almost no time. I used 120 grit sandpaper followed by 220 to smooth it out. To attach my pieces together, I use my Craig jig and the help of my husband. This is kind of an odd shaped piece and being that it was Douglas fir, I didn't want to have to clamp it any more than I had to because I knew that being a soft wood, it would probably dent pretty easily. Before I attach my pieces with screws, I added a little bit of wood glue to add some extra strength and to make this joint seamless. Just had my husband hold it into place and I just drove those screws right through. I love this Craig jig. And to fill in those holes, I just put a little bit of wood glue and I used the Craig jig plugs. I like to roll around the plugs in the glue first before I kind of pack them down there. It just gives a really nice tight seal. With that little bit of scrap wood I had left over, I cut out two pieces for middle supports. And I went ahead and made Craig jig holes in those pieces as well. And then just rounded out the edges again with my little router. This thing is so fun. 
I filled in all of the holes and little gouges I had with a little bit of dark wood filler and then gave everything a final sand down with 220 grit sandpaper before we started to stain everything. I decided to go with a gel stain by General Finishes in the color Nutmeg. It's a nice rich brown without being too warm. Things don't always go as you plan them and I'll show you right here. Once I wiped away the stain on this drawer, look how blotchy it is guys. I was like, it's why is it blotchy? Is it just real dry? And then I took a look at one of the other drawers real closely and you see that cloudiness? I still had more sanding to do. So I sanded it down and stained it and look at the comparison. Wow. So I had to sand down all the drawers just one more time. So that color, um, I knew it was going to be difficult to match the legs to it because they're two different types of wood. So I, I tested out on a scrap piece of wood all the different stains I had to see which one would be closest. That's the nutmeg and it doesn't match. Next to it I have another general finishes color in the color antique walnut. That one's a little deeper color but it's not you know, quite as rich as the nutmeg. So I had a plan. I decided to go ahead and stain the wood with the antique walnut first, just to give it the deepness that it needed. And then I would go over with a second coat of stain in the nutmeg and hopefully get a tone close to the top and the drawers. Here's the coat of antique walnut first. It made my wood nice and deep and now I'm putting on the nutmeg to add a little bit of richness to it. And there we go. I think it looks pretty good. I just attached the legs onto the bottom of the dresser with Craig Jig holes again. I put the holes on the insides of the legs, on the edges and in the middle and then with those support boards I'm going to place them in between both of the legs towards the bottom and I made a couple other supports to support it at the base of the dresser. I just clamped down my legs and drilled in those Craig Jake's screws and then I measured the side supports to make sure the heights were the same on both sides of the legs clamped it into place and screwed those in as well. Now that the dresser was right side up, I was finally able to stain the top. Okay, so I've had a little change of heart about this piece. I know I went through all that trouble of staining it and bringing out all this beautiful wood grain. But stepping back and looking at the entire piece, it's just way too much wood for my liking. So I'm going to paint it. The big kicker in that was all of these little dings that I had to wood fill. I was going to very carefully with an artist brush, paint them all to match the wood grain in the background, which is doable. It would take a lot of work, but even so stepping back and looking at the overall piece, it's just way too much wood for my liking, so it's gonna get painted. I have an idea for it though. I'm not going to cover the entire piece of paint. We're still gonna have some of this beautiful wood showing through, so stick with me and let's get painting. I hand drew a pattern on this dresser, but I didn't realize you couldn't see it from the video, so I'm gonna show you some artwork that I've been inspired by. A lot of these natural, modern, boho, um, pictures with earthy tones in them. Very 70s, very retro. I'm just very drawn to it right now. I think it's so pretty and it's so relaxing. Mr. Kate even did her Airstream in a pattern like this and isn't it so cool? I primed the areas of my pattern that were going to be painted in white because I didn't want them to bleed through. However, I did not prime the entire dresser because I also wanted um, some peek throughs of wood, but I wasn't quite sure where I wanted that wood to th show through just yet. With a couple different sizes of artist brushes, 
I painted in all the different shapes. This circle here is going to be my sun. And the white part in the background is going to be my sky. And then I'm also going to have some white um, down below that's going to be a reflection of water kind of cutting through a canyon. And there's my little Pandy. She's never far from me. My little shadow. Here's what it looked like once I got the white paint on. You can kind of see a little bit of a pattern starting. I went through and kind of cut out all the different shapes with different colors uh, to mark where I wanted my colors to be while it was still on the dresser. And once I had all the colors marked in place, I pulled each dresser drawer out individually and just painted it in my lap on the floor because that was a lot easier than painting it upright. I essentially made myself a giant paint by number. <laughs> In case you're wondering what kind of paint I used for this project, I used all Dixie Belle paints. Um, I used Colonel Mustard, a lighter yellow, terracotta, mud puddle, tea rose, and buttercream. The reason I chose to use Dixie Belle paint is because once it dries, I know it will not reactivate when I put on a top coat or I have to layer on another color of paints and because I had so much wood showing through I did not want it to reactivate when I added my top coat sealer. This painting technique is not difficult at all. However, it is fairly time consuming, so just keep that in mind. I rather enjoy hand painting and find it very relaxing, so I really enjoyed this process. I hope that you will take the time to check out the playlist after this video. There are so many talented YouTubers competing in this challenge and we are from all different parts of the world and different walks of life. I'm excited to see what they come up with myself. And don't forget to check out Corey from Desert DIY. She will be announcing the winner of this challenge. Uh, there's nothing like pulling off fresh tape and seeing those crisp lines. Well, almost crisp lines. My favorite way to apply a top coat sealer indoors is with this sponge. It allows me to apply it quickly and it allows me to apply just a thin layer, very smooth. After one coat of top coat, you will see that you might have some areas that you probably missed. Not a big deal. When you get the second coat on, you'll fill those in. I went ahead and did four layers of top coat because this sponge applies it very thin and it is a top of a dresser. Everywhere else, I applied two coats. On the inside of the dresser, I used Howard's Feed and Wax to add some moisture back into the drawers. It really revitalizes that old dried out wood and I also apply it to the drawer glides. It helps them glide better. The last thing I needed to do was to attach the hardware. The three missing knobs I found surprisingly on Wayfair. They are semicircles which mimic the legs. The other six knobs I had in my stash and here's the final result. Enjoy!
I hope you all enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it. So, how did I do? Was I able to turn this ugly duckling into a swan? Let me know in the comments. Be sure and check out the other videos in this challenge. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy junking.